Landboards presents Soldering D Sub Connectors. Here's the tools that you need to solder D Sub Connectors. An inexpensive set of helping hands. The helping hands come in handy when you're trying to solder the connector. They keep it from wandering around the tabletop that you're working on. Some helping hands have a magnifying glass which can help solder very small fine wires into the tiny holes. You'll need a pair of diagonal cutters for cutting the wires and for cutting the heat shrink insulation. Use wire strippers to strip the wires. A helpful hint I use is to use one size larger in the hole size so that it doesn't ever nick the wire. A heat gun is used on the heat shrink tubing to reduce it down to the smaller size. So let's take a look at the materials that you'll need to use. First off, you're going to obviously need a D-sub connector. I personally like Mauser because I sort of know my way around the site, but DigiKey or any other site like that would be fine. Half the trick on any of these sites is knowing the path to find what you're looking for. Here's the breadcrumb trail. Probably the first search criteria is to look for the number of positions, DB25, DB37, DB9. When you're selecting the gender, make sure you select the cable end gender, not the board end gender. We're looking for solder cup or possibly solder, although probably just solder cup. Although any wire that fits in the hole would work, I really prefer these color-coded cables that come in a ribbon cable. The huge advantage in using color-coded wires is that when you're tracing the wires and debugging, it's much, much easier. These wires are commonly available on eBay at reasonable prices. These come with 40 wires in the cable and they can be found under the title DuPont wires. Make sure you pick the right gender if you're connecting into a connector on the other side. Putting heat shrink over the wires really does help a lot as well. 1 16th inch heat shrinking seems to be about the right size. Heat shrink can add a lot of strain relief to the connection to keep the wire from breaking off at the pin. Heat shrink can also keep any stray wires from touching adjacent pins or wires that might enter the assembly somehow. Next we'll take a look at the steps required to solder the connections. The first step is to fill all the cups on the connector with solder. Here are the first few pins have had solder melted into them. The whole cup doesn't need to be filled, but just some of it. The first step of preparing the wire is to strip the wires to length. Next, tin the wires with solder. Then cut the heat shrink to the length required to insulate the wire. Then slide the heat shrink over each of the wires before you do the soldering. The result should look something like this. Now you're ready to solder the wires into the cups on the connectors. Next, solder the wires into the cups on the rear of the connector. If you're right-handed, it helps to solder in the wires on the left first. The result should be something like this, with no stray wires and the wire all soldered within the connector. The advantage of pre-filling the cups and tinning the wires should be apparent at this point since no extra solder was required. Next, slide the heat shrink over the wire down to the cup and over the pin as far as you can. It should look something like this. Push the insulation as far down as you possibly can. Use your heat gun to shrink the heat shrink. Be careful, it gets really hot. The connector can be hot enough to burn your hand. Here's what it looks like after the heat shrink was melted. So let's take a look at the result. That's a pretty nice looking result, I must say. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. If you want more information, you can see our wiki pages for these products, and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards. Thanks for watching our video, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.